she, Caitlin, asked you for an autograph when you were? Yes, she was Bruce Jenner at the time. It was 1973. Yeah. They're all, I mean, I think the, I mean, listen, I think the Kardashians is the closest thing we have to like a first family. It's like, there's no oh, move they make. That was really well said, man. If they, if America has a first family or a royal family, it's the Kardashians. And if you stop being a jerk and think automatically they're stupid or something, you realize not a bad family to be in. Nobody gets hurt, at least not physically. They're all rich. They're all pretty. No, that, they're a good time. And other than, I mean, there's a lot of drama, around, but not really. Like you never hear of something really... I mean, I guess you do, but I don't know. I, I, I think they know what they're doing. I think they know what they're doing, absolutely. And I think they're really good at it. What about like Real Housewives? Like, is your wife a fan of Real Housewives? Like, what do you think of all? She's a crazed woman. I look at my TV show before I go to bed. It has, what, what have you recorded and what do you want to record it? Housewives, Bachelor, Bachelor Ivan, Love Island. Oh, she loves it. And everyone I've watched because they're hard to sit through if, you, if you're not, if you're not dating it. Nothing really wrong with any of them. They get accomplished what they what they want to do. They need to do this on Love Island. Somebody's got to get drunk and have sex on this island. And they do everything. You know, they. I know what I would want from Love Island if I was watching. And that's somebody's got to get drunk and have sex. And they always do. It's a good time, man. What would you do if your wife came to you and said, "Listen, I just got a call. It's this. It's Ryan Seacrest. We're doing a Seattle Housewives or whatever. You're moving to LA. How would you feel about that?" I couldn't tell her to do it fast enough. I think that'd be way fun. The problem is, if she does for those things what she does for me, she spends a good time saying no to things. I got offered a lot of money uh, to do reality stars reunite, whatever the hell it was, and it was it was six figures, and it was a lot of it. And Amy said, "Are you out of your mind? You dragged yourself out of that crap. You can't do that." I'm like, oh yeah, you have my best interest at heart. What was the six figures? What was it for? Like, well, what you want to tell you? It's for how much? Well, I was going to say it could be like Celebrity Big Brother or like Dancing with the Stars or one of those. I mean, it was, uh, what was it, honey? It was Celebrity Marriage Bootcamp. I didn't know you were listening. It was Celebrity Marriage Bootcamp. Boot and this is a big thing because they said, don't repeat it. Two weeks, quarter of a million dollars. Wow. How'd she, how'd she say no? I know that we have money now, but that's big money. How can you say no? And she did. She said no, and she was a little bit uh, unpleasant about it. And by the way, unless I'm wrong, I think that's VH1 also, just FYI. So <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out. Listen, your wife and I are just trying to help you out over here. I, I appreciate it, man. Would you ever do, so you would do some other type of reality show, like if it was right? Well, this is a reality show and I did it. We did uh, Battle of the Next Network Stars. And we were the retro stars and somebody else was on the other side. We didn't think about it. We're old and in horrible condition. But the guys on the, they used to be on the show, they're still in their 20s. They just killed us and they made a point to say this at the end. This was the most uh, upsided victory in the history of the show. They just kicked our asses. I love Battle of the Network Stars. That's a good show. Remember, Mom, you're, you're a kid at this point. Uh, remember Robert Conrad? Yeah, vaguely. He's in a thing amazing with uh, Gabe Kaplan. And he's a little guy. Uh, uh, who the hell are we talking about? Robert Kaplan? Oh, yeah. But no, he was a bigger guy. The, uh, Matt, the Wild Wild West guy, that guy. Whatever it was, he was screaming that it was a cheat. That how could that guy beat me, Robert Conrad? And they did it again, and Gabe Kaplan kicked his ass again. And everybody was really embarrassed for him, but he should have known that was going to happen and not, he's that character. What about, you know, you had your own talk show for a minute, then you were on the other half with Mario Lopez and Dick Clark. Did Mario. you, you said, my, my Lord. No, I said, oh, Mario Lopez. Tell us, what about oh, Mario no. Lopez? Beautiful, and when I looked at this with David Cassidy, man, uh, same kind of thing, he'd come to work and, we have different gates to get through, and he'd always try and sneak through, but the ladies show up, and the ladies love them. I got in a boxing match with that guy, not celebrity or anything, just boxing. He loved boxing. And uh, I hit him, and his head went back, and he said, let's take it a little easier. And I said, yeah, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Boom! And I hit him a little bit harder. Again, I didn't mean to. He's a real boxer. And I went, okay, yeah. And he just went, boom! And broke my eardrum. First shot. First shot he gave me broke my eardrum. But I'm one of those guys, like when I was in school, I made friends with a guy I got in a fight with. I love Mario Lopez. What was hotel room and he's there always. 
Mario. Here's the movies that you should see this week on live matinee or whatever it is. He's always in my hotel room. Sounds a little weirder than it is. What was it like working with him? He's he's a gem. It's so weird because I've never used that expression ever, not even once. But uh, I said, uh, I, he was try, he's getting a little uh, confused about what to do and how to do it. And I pulled him aside because we're, we're about to go on. And everybody's got to go back and forth with what they ask, what they want to do. I said, forget that. You're the quarterback of this. Know what comes next and say it, and I'll take it from there. And I'll look at you, and you're doing, the guy can do his job all the time. And um, Dick, uh, Dick Clark, also a gem. First episode of the show, he said to uh, uh, Mario Lopez, uh, you're not in that good a shape. And Mario Lopez says, you want to do a push-up contest? And Dick won. Now, I don't know if he could not do 74, but Dick Clark, at 74 years old, did 74 push, uh, push-ups. And beat Mario Lopez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have shocked. I mean, that would shock. That shocks me. It, it shocked everybody as it happened, and then we all went, "Oh yeah, what did you expect? Dick Clark's gonna win. That's what Dick Clark does." And he it just a champ, that guy. And uh, I love going into his uh, dressing room, and me and Mario would sneak into his room and mix everything that he had in such a perfect place. And you'd just hear him. You'd go. He'd go in there. And he goes. You bastards! And he'd come out and he'd chase us around in all good sportsmanship. But he was not to be fooled with. Uh, you know, Dick Clark was a real guy. Don't mess with Dick Clark. Oh, no, that's what I said. And now I say don't mess with Ryan Seacrest. Oh, I don't. What was his, his uh, net worth is, I think, $240 million. Is it? Real, yeah, I think so. I checked. I'm in the ballpark, right? I thought it was like $400 million, but I could be wrong. You know, once you get over the hundred million dollars, I don't care. Give it to me. Yeah, I don't think either of us should feel sorry for Ryan Seacrest during this chat. Right. What about? Did you like like the concept of a talk show? Would you do another talk show? Oh, I would most certainly. If they have an opening for sixty-two uh, year old men <laughs> and the demographic that we pull, but I would. Yeah, I I did a couple of them. Uh, Stephanie Miller, you know her? Stephanie yeah. Miller, she uh, she had a faltering talk show, and I had a faltering. Uh, altering daytime talk show and they said you want to try your hand at nighttime and i said i do that's what i that's how i got here but there's just too much money spent on uh, uh, other things and they they couldn't give it to me i wish that i had it but i had the daytime the danny show I thought that was great i thought that was a lot of fun and uh you know i got it by being good on the radio they were in my radio uh, studio going what can you do and i said here's this period of my said, watch this and just boom and the world exploded and they went all right you're hired did you do any research? Because like the other half was, I mean, it was billed kind of like as the male view. Like, did you speak to any of like Barbara Walters or anyone who worked at the view? I, I did the view after doing Breaking Mind Ichi. Uh, uh, Barbara Walters said it, I quote, I will not speak to him and walked off. Because <laughs> they had seen uh, Breaking Mind Ichi, that's what we wanted to talk about. And then it got in there, oh, this is real. This guy really did this. This guy really, you know, uh, got really drunk, got in fist fights. I'm not talking to him. And the rest of the show talked to me and they really loved me. But she she doesn't know if she loves me or not because she didn't take the opportunity to speak to me. 